Hi, I'm Tyler McGraw. I'm a consultant with Yellowfin. And I'm Tom Linton. I'm also a consultant here with Yellowfin. Tom, welcome on board. I think you're, you're like the latest and greatest for us, right? I am. I've been here about a month and a half and loving every day of it. <laughs> I'll make sure I pass that on to our boss that he knows you're happy. <laughs> so welcome, Tom. Well, every month we try and do a little podcast um, for a, an example of something we've used recently, something in the consulting group, maybe one of our customers has used or highlight a particular product feature that uh, somebody might be interested in. And so last uh, couple of weeks ago, I said to you, I, I brought my utility bill in and I was shocked at what I'm paying. I mean, I'm paying a lot for utility bill. And so what did I, I gave you an assignment. I said, tell me, uh, why is my utility bill so high? Yeah. So what I did was I went out to our department of energy, the government, and they have an open data page here where you can go and grab different uh, bits of data that they collect and it's open to the public. All oh, right. So this is free. You can just download some data. This will tell me. So really what I was asking for was for you to loan me some money to pay my bill, but instead <laughs> you went to the government for some data to explain it. Well, I tell you what, you loan me and then I'll loan you back. <laughs> right. We got our own little government, <laughs> Tom and Tyler government right here. All right. So free data, download that, throw it into Yellowfin. What did you discover? Tell me, tell me why power is so expensive for me. Yeah, so went in, grabbed a couple different types of data. So I wanted to look at power generation in America and see what types of power we're producing in those states. And then also wanted to see your utility rate because that's ultimately what's going to affect your bill. Yeah, and you pulled this into a map. How how'd you put this map together then? Yeah, so with Yellowfin, it's extremely easy to use this mapping feature here. What I did was I took the zip codes that were in my data and I linked them to our geopacks in Yellowfin. So I'm going to tab over here to our marketplace and show you here this U.S. zip code pack. And what right, I did was that. just join those, my data with this zip code pack and it allowed me to easily map my, my spot. Yeah, and this comes with Yellowfin. It's a great tool for uh, our customers. I know I've got several of them who use this feature, tie zip codes together. And what, you can do counties as well. What else do you tie together in that zip code pack? Yeah, so you can tie together state codes, your counties, your zip codes. There's quite a few different uh, geospatial types of data that you can connect to these. And as you can see here, we do provide some other countries as well, not just North America. Yeah, and we just download those and add them to it. Okay, so take me back to your map. So what am I looking at? Very patriotic here. I can see red, white, and blue. <laughs> you got our colors down. What, what, are the, what does this represent, what I'm looking at here? You know, being from Texas, I am very patriotic. And, you know, these are actually the country of Texas colors here. Now. <laughs> I got gotcha. you. The United States of Texas. Yeah, United States of Texas. That's right. So, um, you know, what I actually did here was I like to look at it as sort of a heat thing. So red being the hottest, that's where you're paying the most for your energy. Ah, and, you. Uh, you know, blue being the coldest, that's where you're paying the least for your electricity. So high energy costs in the red states and uh, not so high energy costs in the blue and light blue. Yeah, so let's take a look at our national average here. You know, national average is about 13 cents per kilowatt hour. Kilowatt hour is? Kilowatt hour is what you're going to see on your electricity bill. Gotcha. So 13 cents per hour of power in my house. That's right. Gotcha. And Hawaii is? Oh, boy. Hawaii. That is a big one. So Hawaii is at 34 wow. cents per so kilowatt hour. So you can hour. surf all you want, but you have to turn the lights off. Oh, there's no lights in Hawaii. <laughs> I got you. So Hawaii and, uh, and Alaska, I get, right? The remotes, tough to get power, tough to generate power. So they're paying a lot. That's give, right. Give me an example of somebody, though, in the, in the lower 48 that's paying a lot for power. Yeah, absolutely. So let's use someone, just like you said, in the lower 48. What I'm going to do is scroll down to our worst electricity rates in the United States. And we'll see, obviously, number one and two are Hawaii and Alaska. But number three is Vermont. And that's Vermont. within our 48. You know, what's going on here? Yeah, up in the Northeast. What is going on? Well, I'm going to drill through here by clicking on the state of Vermont. And you'll see we'll have a nice exploded data view um, of essentially some more information to help us answer that question. Yeah, drill through. Love it. All my customers use drill through has a nice crisp dashboard and then they click on it, pulls up a sub report and away you go. Now I see Vermont has a lot of hydroelectric. So a lot of water power plants. Um, explain to me though, what does this mean? Kilowatt hours produced per household? How, how are you getting that number? Yeah. So actually I used Yellowfin to create a calculated column here because what I'm trying to figure out here, you know, we talked a little bit um, earlier about kilowatt hours and what they are. And, you know, our national average for a household is about a thousand kilowatt hours um, per household per month, which is about 12,000 a year. So that's, that's my entire 
power usage over one month typically on average is around a thousand kilowatts. That's right. So if we're looking at this kilowatt hours produced per household, this is on a yearly basis here. So if we broke gotcha. out that thousand to a year, we're talking 12,000. As, as you can see, they're actually underproducing. Yeah. Here. So they're out of all of the combined types, they're only giving me around 8,500 kilowatt hours. So they, so what you're saying is Vermont can't produce enough power for all of the households in their area. That's exactly right. And you know what? We're not even including the businesses that use yeah. more energy than a thousand kilowatt yeah. hours. So now this makes sense. We need to sell, uh, we need to, uh, you know, quit our jobs and go sell, sell power to Vermont. That's what we need. Oh, I'm right behind you. That's my retirement plan. <laughs> okay. So show me a model that, if that's true, if that's really the case, show me an example then of a, a state it's overproducing power and show me, does that really equate to cheaper rates? Sure. So let's hop over to our best electricity rates here. And on the top, we have the state of Washington, state of Washington. at almost eight cents per wow. kilowatt hour. So 10 cents less per kilowatt hour on the West Coast. And again, you're exploding up some data. There's our friend Hydroelectric. That's right. Hydroelectricity. I've done some research on that as I uh, was looking into Washington a bit more. And hydroelectricity is actually one of the cheapest types of power to produce in the United States. And you can see how much of it they produce up there in Washington. Yeah, 45,000 kilowatt hours for household, right? By household, by year. That's right. So what are they doing with all that power? Well, they might be selling it to some other states. And actually, I've been there and everywhere east of uh, those mountains of Seattle there, you pretty much have server farms. <laughs> <laughs> right. So you got Amazon, Microsoft. That's why they're putting their uh, data centers up there. All that cheap power. Right. Yeah. So now we've talked about, you know, the high end, the low end. Let's see where we are in Idaho. I mean, that's ah, where your electricity right. bills real that's high. Right. Nine. I'm only paying 9.65. Interesting. So I'm well below the national average. Yeah, our state average is actually pretty solid. We're closer to one of the best. We're not in the top five, but we're one of the best. Interesting. Okay. Now let's say I lived in a state that didn't have an abundance of our friend hydroelectric. What could I do then? I mean, what, how, what are other states using to produce power? Yeah, so let's hop over here to our power sources in America tab to answer that question. All right. So Tyler, we're now on our power sources in America tab in our dashboard. Gotcha. Okay. So this is power. What, what material we use to generate power across the entire United States. That's right. And as you'll see here, natural gas, our number one resource. Wow. Okay. I got gotcha. you. And, and what's the MW? What's, uh, what's 592,000 MWs? Yeah, so that's megawatts. When we typically rate a power plant, we're talking in megawatts. We're not talking in kilowatts because they're producing a lot of power. Yeah, 1,000 thousand kilowatts per megawatt. Gotcha. And we, as a nation, are mostly doing that with natural gas. Yeah, with natural gas. But, I mean, look at number two, coal. I mean, can you believe that? Yeah, I thought we were getting rid of coal. I mean, coal is kind of like... Uh, we were having this conversation the other day about clean air and making an inversion and, and all those types of things, but we sure generate a lot of power with coal. Yeah, you know, we do. And I, you know, the conversations of today make it seem like coal is going away and it's a technology of the yesteryear. But when we look at this, obviously coal is number two. So let's look at this over time when we look at yeah, we, plants being built. So are right? we building more coal plants? Well, let's come down here and take a look at coal, and we'll see it really had its peak in the 1970s. Ah, gotcha. And I, you know what I really like here, what you did inside of Yellowfin of tying those together, they're using the same colors, so I knew exactly that the gray was going to be coal. Good color selection, by the way, as well. Yeah, thank you. I tried to yeah. make it a little bit uh, the same, so wind, solar, green, you know. <laughs> yeah, I got gotcha. you. Okay, so we're, 1970s was the big hurrah for coal. Well, what are we investing in now, then? Yeah, so when we come down and look at the type of plants that we're commissioning, wind and solar is by far where we're putting our money. Gotcha. So we are spending more money or investing more money in wind and solar in the, uh, in the late 2010s. Yep. And boy, I sure see a lot of gas that got built in the 2000s, though. That, that makes sense to me. Right. Natural gas. I mean, all throughout essentially the 80s and into really the 2000s, natural gas was very prevalent. Fracking um, was not necessarily a new technology, but we realized we could get a lot of natural gas that way. And the plants are very cheap to build. So yeah. 2000s, we really um, have, see a spike there in natural gas. You plants. know, what's most interesting on this graph that, that I really I just now realized is hydro 
electric. Look at hydroelectric. So, Isn't that weird? You know, it kind of makes sense because think about it. We have we've basically have dammed up the re- river ecosystems that we can actually do that. And now we're not, you know, we've kind of maxed out our hydrodynamic options, I would think. That's what that chart's telling me. Yeah, exactly. And the funny thing here for me is that it was one of the first things we've yeah. used for power. I would have thought it was cool, to be honest with you. It's the technology of the yeah. dinosaurs. I mean, yeah, come absolutely. on. Well, and, and that's a very interesting point, too. And now I see it and it makes sense because I got to see it visually. And I know my customers, their data makes more sense when they see it visually like this. Yeah, so let's go up and take a look at just the state of Idaho here, is that's yeah. where we're from. Let's see what we're, what types of power we're it, producing it's here. It's got to be, uh, we got to be cold, right? No? No, we're probably natural gas. I'll bet we're natural, natural gas. gas. Okay, yeah, natural gas, okay. I'll, I'll go with natural. Mm. Aha, uh-huh. hydroelectric. Okay, fair enough. So we have an abundance of water here. Uh, I can see that. And, and we're producing one point, almost 2,000 kilowatt, megawatt. Yeah. Per hour, right? That's a per hour number. That's a per hour number here. So, you know, not a ton of electricity compared to some other states, but you know what? I think we have one of the smallest populations. Yeah, yeah. what are you going to empower? It's like, uh, you know, everybody who lives where they're going to live, uh, they leave the lights off. Yeah, and I don't think our elk are using uh, <laughs> iPods right. yet. So, uh, What is other, though? I see the purple, other. What, what do you mean other power generation? Yeah, that is interesting. You know, it is the, uh, the number four technology. Let's see what other comprises of by drilling down here. Wood. <laughs> it's wood. Wood waste and biomass. Interesting. Well, we so do have a lot of trees, I guess. <laughs> oh, and this came from Department of Energy, about 52 megawatt hour per hour for wood waste. Interesting. Yeah, it's not, not a bad number uh, for the state of Idaho. But, you know, let's come down here and take a look at the plant commissioning. Yeah. So as you can see, hydro, we built the most in, in uh, regards to hydro. And yeah. I guess that reflects why it's our number one um, energy source. Yeah, and coal, not so much, right? Because that makes sense. It's not necessarily abundant here in the state of Idaho. We'd have to, we'd have to ship it in. But we've got plenty of water, plenty of hydroelectric available. Yeah, and we don't have a, a large demand for electricity yeah. here in the state of Idaho, so we don't need something as um, really as efficient as coal is. I know that's a weird yeah, word to use. I know you use. keep coming back to coal. Show, show me again nationwide. What are we spending for coal? What are we getting? Because uh, I thought that was like old technology. It's dead. It's dying out. We want to get rid of it. Yeah, so let's reset here and let's take a look at coal again. So I'm going to come down here and look at our top five coal producers. So these are the top five states that use coal to create electricity here, to generate electricity. And as you'll see here, what's number one? Uh, Texas? Oh, my home state. Number one again. I love it. <laughs> but wait a minute. I thought Texas is oil. Why, why is there coal production power, power plants in Texas? Yeah. You, you know, you'd think there's so much oil down there. Why aren't we using that to, to generate electricity? But we use that for our cars. So <laughs> we save that really. <laughs> I gotcha. Okay. So if, if I'm understanding this tree graph, you're telling me that the state of Texas generates, uh, what is that, 15,000? 16,000, 16, 16, yeah, 16,000 megawatts, megawatts per, per hour. hour. And it's mostly coal-fired power plants. Yeah, 16,000 megawatt hours, only coal, um, coal-fired power plants. Oh, right, right. So that's the cumulative total of coal-fired power plant production in the state of Texas. That's right. And actually, now that I'm thinking about it, this is the first time I've really made this connection, but we're actually producing eight times the amount of power as the entire state of Idaho <laughs> just with coal in the state of Texas. Well, you know, I mean, Texas is kind of big, right? Everything's bigger in Texas, right? <laughs> well, that is right here. And you know what? Let's talk a little bit about renewable energy. That, that's a hot yeah. topic this, these days here. Yeah, that's our future. We, we've got to find some ways to produce power, meet our energy needs, and not through coal and not through some of these other natural resources, right? Yeah, and you know what? My hypothesis is that nobody wants to pollute the environment. And, you know, we understand coal is bad for the environment. So my hypothesis is that we're not sticking with coal because we love making the environment dirty. I think it's because there might not be a good yeah, alternative yeah. The, yet. Alternative fuels. That's, that's the key phrase everybody uses, alternative fuels. And I noticed here you're going about to talk about wind, right? <laughs> that's right. You see my home <laughs> state of Texas there on the map. I know. I, I don't know if I should put my hand over my heart or what. I mean, what's the, the actual protocol here, but. Wind yeah. power in Texas. Yeah. So, you know, if we look at wind and solar combined and, and you look at it and you say, if we look at a wind power plant and a solar power plant, 
which do you think can produce or is the largest producer of electricity in the United States? Do you think wind power would have the largest plant or do you think solar yeah, would be? I, so for me, I, it's going to be solar, right? I'm thinking solar power plants, you know, solar. Yeah, everywhere has a sun. Not yeah. everywhere is windy, yeah, right? I got you. I, I think it's, I, it's got it's solar. Well, here in the panhandle of Texas, we actually have the largest wind power plant and it's way bigger than any other solar plant at 249 megawatt hours. Really? Yeah. It's the biggest one. In it, Texas. It, it's the biggest one in the United States, as a matter of fact. <laughs> so the biggest wind power plant in the U.S. is in Texas. Yep. Based on that Department of Energy data, yes, it is. And it's only producing 249 megawatts per hour. I know. Doesn't that seem low compared that's to nothing. the 16,000 megawatts we're producing with coal in yeah, the state of Texas? That's nothing. I, I, that's shocking to me, actually. The biggest one that we have only produces 249 megawatts. Yeah, so let's go ahead and extrapolate that because we talk about replacing our coal with that alternative fuel, yeah. right? So if we wanted to replace all of Texas's coal power, just Texas, none of the other states, just Texas's coal power with wind and using our largest wind facility here, we would have to have 65 of those wind facilities to replace what we're doing just with coal. coal. Just coal. Just coal. And do you know how big that wind power plant is wind farm so remember yeah that wind farm it's a farm that's a good word to use because it's big <laughs> it's uh i don't know it's a square mile right it's a m mile worth of those little propeller things yeah that's fair um no it's actually 73 square miles <laughs> 73 square miles is that is is that wind farm in texas wow. <laughs> that is right 73 square miles so if we had to do 65. Yeah, I can see a problem already. There it is. Yep, <laughs> if we had to do 65 of them, and that would take the, an area the size of the North America continent, the African continent, and the Australian oh, continent. Man. Yeah, so we could turn, if I get what you're saying, we could turn Australia into our wind farm and still not generate enough power to replace coal in Texas. That's right. Oh, geez. Okay, so now I see the problem with some of those renewable energies. Yeah, so I mean, you know, you're telling me to you know, replace all the coal power with wind power. And this is just an easy way for me to represent to you that, you know, it's a really tough problem. Yeah. It's, it's a land problem and an efficiency problem. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you keep coming back with that efficiency thing. Uh, take me back to the chart w that shows the type of energy we use or the type of fuel we use to create power. And I noticed number three on the net, on the list, nuclear. Oh, boy. Or nuclear. nuclear, if you're from Texas, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I live close to the pre well, former president. And uh, yes, nuclear, nuclear would be the term. So yeah, I mean, nuclear is a hot topic, though, isn't it? I mean, anytime we bring it up, I mean, that's protests. And you think about all the bad things, right, that have happened with nuclear power over the years. Yeah, but I, I'm just shocked that we, it's the number three type of producer of electricity in the nation is nuclear power. Yeah, so I'm going to hop over. Let's talk about that a little bit. So I'm going to hop over to our nuclear uh, tab here in this dashboard, and we're going to talk a bit about nuclear and, and when it came online and, and why it's still a hot topic today. So now we're looking at our nuclear tab. Nuclear tab, excuse me. I am from <laughs> Texas you. here. So we're looking at our nuclear tab, and what you'll notice here is we have a nice map showing our plant commission, our nuclear plant commissionings in the uh, United States over time. Yeah, so I see your legend there on the bottom. You've got uh, 60s, 70s, 80s. So this is when the, the plant came online. Is that the date range there? That's right. So this is when the plant came on, the decade the plant came online. Gotcha. And then the size is how many megawatt hours of electricity it produces. That's right. So Very that's how big it is. Okay, I got you. Yeah, so I also overlaid our data on top of the 2010 U.S. Census data that we spoke about a little earlier. Right, from the zip code pack, yep. Okay. Yep, so just included with Yellowfin for free, I was able to put a layer on here to look at the concentration of the number of homes by county. Gotcha, so this is, so the little bit of uh, red that I see is population density by county according to the 2010 census data. That's right. So what I was trying to see here is as we ha have these more populated, these densely populated with houses areas here, are we going to find more of these nuclear facilities? And it seems to hold true. <laughs> yeah. So that makes a huge amount of sense. Let's put a nuclear bomb right next to all of these people <laughs> in this city. Okay. 
you're not allowed to say bomb on an airplane. Oh, okay. Right, okay. We'll edit that out of the podcast then. We won't say bomb. But there's a nuclear reactor right next to those. So I, I just want to point out, I actually lived near Three, three Mile Island for a couple months in the late 80s. And I kid you not, I had a, a tinfoil taste in my mouth some days. I don't know, my fillings would ache a little bit. And there was really a tinfoil taste in my mouth at times. Yeah, <laughs> I believe it. Um, I, 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 that's true. That's a totally true story. Hey, I believe it. You know, I think um, as much as you blow smoke out of your mouth sometimes, <laughs> I believe that one. Here. <laughs> you actually believe that. One. Yeah. So, you know, you know, let's come down here and take a look at a different uh, view here of when these nuclear plants came online. And what I want to show here is that we really had two waves of nuclear and you just mentioned that you lived near Three Mile, Three Mile Island in the 80s. Well, in 1979, I annotated here on the graph with Yelp and makes it very easy yeah. for me to kind of explain what I want you to look at. Um, you know, we had the Three Mile Island partial meltdown of one right. of their reactors in 1979. Right. So I, I love that you're using this annotation. So my customers use annotation all the time. They love that feature, the ability to annotate a piece of data and explain a little more about it. And so what you've got then is a point on your uh, chart uh, that shows that Three Mile Island accident in 79. So are you saying then that that's why we don't have nuclear power, more nuclear power plants, or we see that little dip? Well, you know, I think that led to quite a few protests in the late 70s, yeah. early 80s. Yeah, it was a scary time. It was scary. I'm sure it was. Thank goodness I wasn't alive then. <laughs> <laughs> You're such a baby. <laughs> no, so... You know, I think it was part of uh, why we see this dip here in the early 80s. I think the protests stopped some of the commissioning of those plants. Yeah. But if you really want to know my opinion on why we're stopping the building of nuclear plants, it's because of the cost variability. First off, it's a very high cost. And on top of that, when you go to get an estimate to build one of these facilities, they're not cookie cutter. Yeah. So the estimates range from, you know, down in the $2,000 per kilowatt hour all the way up to $11,000 per kilowatt hour. Wow. And I see that you did that with another nice annotation on your data. It's very easy. And so as a Yellowfin user, if I have permission to see this chart on this graph and permission to see your annotation, I'm going to see your, your thing there. And so if I understand your chart correctly, what you've got then is an annotation that runs this big blue section here from 1978 through 1997. And what you're saying is, hey, this is when natural gas was very inexpensive and prevalent and a lot of power plants were being built that used that as a fuel source. Yep, that's it. So the natural gas and also that cost variability inevitably led to the demise of nuclear over time here. It was just, you know, if you're going to build one of these plants, you're not going to have the money. You need to go to an investment firm to go get that money. And it's gotcha. very tough to make a case for such a wide cost variability. Yeah. And, and what's your line there? So you've got, this is a combination chart. I know my customers love combination chart. It gives me two different axes that I can use. Uh, to, so what's the, what's the line chart as part of this? Yeah, so not only did we want to look at the number of plants that were being commissioned over time, but I also wanted to be able to represent how much more efficient these plants became oh, over time. Right. As you'll notice here, you know, we start back in the 1960s, the late 1960s, and these nuclear facilities were only producing about 538 megawatts per yeah. hour. They were Not just very figuring much. it out. They were just trying to get their head around how it was doing. Right. And we come to the, the latest here, and we're talking 1,100, almost 1,200 megawatt hours. Wow. So what you're saying then is that although this is a scary solution, they're incredibly efficient, and they feed power to a wide range. So let's come down to our efficiency here. And take a look at coal again. And coal is just so darn efficient, sitting at yeah. about 64%. So that's why it keeps hanging around. I mean, it's just an efficient way to create electricity. That's right. It's just hard to replace when our second best technology to that would be natural gas. Our second cleanest technology to that would be natural gas. Yeah. And it's sitting at 42%. Yeah. Okay. I see it. So I, I stand by my statement then. If, if I'm an industry analyst, I want to make natural gas more efficient or wind and solar. So show me wind and solar, right? I mean, that's supposed to be where we're headed, but I can see some challenges here already on this graph. Oh, visually, you can tell that the largest wind farm is only producing 249 megawatts. Yeah, that's down in Texas, 75 square miles. <laughs> and, it, and it's like enough to keep a couple of stadiums open, right? I mean, that's not a whole lot of power. 
That's right. It's not a whole lot of power. And even at that, the efficiency rating is just so poor at wow. only 34%. And, and that's because... The sun's only out for so long. The wind <laughs> only blows a certain uh, amount of hours yeah. a day. So again, if I'm an analyst, I come back and I say, okay, since it's only 33%, 34% efficient, then I need to find a way to store that energy so I can use it later. And that explains why Elon Musk and some of these guys are so invested heavily in uh, battery power and saving that. Yeah, I dumped my 401k and I'm just investing in battery power. <laughs> yeah. So again, I'm going to interpret this. So this is what I love about Yellowfin, the ability to see it visually, number one. And then, as you say, extrapolate some important points. Then I can walk into that management office and say, yeah, we need to invest in battery R&D because efficiency, the most efficient power plant that you're ever going to have, wind and solar, is not going to be efficient enough. That's right. You'd have to purchase a lot of land at the current efficiency gotcha. and that's not going to get you a great return right. on your investment. So let's say I want to share this information and broadcast it. How am I going to get this information out to, to my buddies in the power industry? Well, Tyler, we're going to use an infographic to share this information. So I'll scroll on up here and go into our infographic tab. Infographic. Okay. So this is like those big uh, pictures that show a lot of information. Ah, this is what you got. Okay. How'd you put this together? Well, it's very easy to do in Yellowfin. So all I had to do was just come up with a background image of what I wanted. And I created a few different little icons here just to, uh, yeah, yeah. So I really wanted to tell a story here because, you know, the reason infographics are important this day and age is people digest information with pictures and data and just makes it a little easier to understand what kind of story I'm trying to tell here. Yeah, I, I see these around all the time. And uh, I always scroll through them and look through them and say, oh, wow, I didn't know that about penguins in Antarctica or something like that. So you're telling me inside of Yellowfin, you, uh, you put all of this together with just having some background images put in place and then dropped our reports on top. That's exactly right. So all I did was find these images. I put them in Yellowfin and just dumped our reports right on top of this background. Excellent. All right. So how do I get this to my buddies then? Yeah, so what we'll do is we'll just come in here and we have multiple different ways that we can get it out to people. We can just simply export this into a PDF and, right. and you can send it out. You can print it from here. You can do whatever you want with that PDF or Excel. Or even better, I can just use the share feature within Yellowfin here and we have multiple different options. Yeah, my customers love this. So distributing it to an email list. Uh, for example, I have one of my customers who they actually have a mail list built into their, um, you know, their Outlook server. And they just, when they want to distribute a certain report, they just put that address in the uh, to-do and it sends it right off through their, uh, for, through their Outlook. Yeah, that's a great use for it. That's, uh, that's actually a very powerful use case. And I'm going to make sure my customers are doing that too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, the other thing I like too is the, is the link. So uh, click the link feature. This is one of those that I, I think that really makes for an easy way to share information. Man, I'm just going to send you a link or cut and paste that link into a document or whatever I want it to be. They can, they can hit that. One, one thing that people need to understand though is they, they have to have their permission set up correctly. They got to be able to do that uh, from a licensing standpoint, but very powerful way to distribute information uh, to people who are uh, yellow, who are not necessarily a yellowfin user. Yeah, it's really what I love about Yellowfin, though, is that we have all these different avenues to be able to share our information because that's what's important. We need to get this out in front of people, and we have many different ways to do that here within Yellowfin. Now, I know, Tom, when you were putting this together, you also took advantage of our collaboration features inside of Yellowfin. Tell me a little bit about what you did with, because uh, I know you worked with our graphic artists to kind of put some of these things together. Yeah, so I could come over here to my activity stream here. And for instance, I was adding a comment. And this is what I was doing with our Jimmy. He's our great graphics yeah. guy, great marketing guy, very, very talented here. And all I was doing, we opened up a discussion stream on this. And we just started adding comments about it. So for example, I started with, if I can type right here, <laughs> <laughs> I need uh, some... Yeah. So graphics on power and call. Yeah. Yeah. I remember you got, I, I remember seeing this thread and, and just, just for people who might be listening, we use this all the time inside of Yellowfin. I mean, we, what's that saying? Eat your own dog food. Not that I like that <laughs> saying, but yeah, we use this kind of activity stream all the time inside of Yellowfin. It gives us an opportunity then to, uh, to, um, you know, use the tool so that our customers know we have actual experience with it. 
That's right. And we did. We opened up multiple discussion streams just on this one infographic. But, you know, it just makes it so much easier because I get so many emails throughout the day that sometimes yeah. I just lose track. And with Yellowfin, you know, if I'm, if I'm focused on this infographic, everything I need to know is within this infographic, you know, with the discussion stream my, and my activity stream. Yeah, it's very bit. simple. All right. Well, take me through the infographic itself. Let's uh, show me what you kind of highlighted and, and uh, let's see it. Yeah. So we talked about quite a bit today. And really what I wanted to highlight here first is how are we producing our power? What resources are we using and the percentages in America? So very easy to tell here, starting from the top and moving from left to right. We got natural gas as our leader and then moving all the way down to the bottom. Other. Yeah. Yeah, we talked about natural gas, and I and I don't see that going away anytime soon, right? It's to your point, it's very um, not necessarily inexpensive, but it's cheaper than the other alternatives to build those, and it has less of those bad emissions. That's right. Some of those other things, yeah. That's what's helping us out there and keeping natural gas around. There's our buddy Cole, and uh, my favorite nuclear. Nuclear, <laughs> nuclear is in there at number three. That's right. My teeth are aching just thinking about that ah. right now. <laughs> So then I came down here and I said, you know, we talked a bit about the types of generation and the efficiency along with right. those. So I wanted to throw in that graph here, which really we're looking at if you built one generator, what's the, the capacity that that generator could output? And then what is also the capacity factor? So there's a capacity it can produce a thousand yeah. megawatts, right? But what's the efficiency, the capacity factor? It's yeah, only, and, yeah. and this is the graphic that really kind of highlighted to me the challenge we've got with solar and wind and others because we don't have enough of it and their efficiency is, you know, that 33%, 34%, which is going to be a significant challenge if we want to replace some of those other more traditional uh, power source uh, generation sources. Yeah, that's right. And you know, another thing that's great about this infographic here that I think we just haven't touched on yet is these are all live, these charts here. So I can come in and I don't just have to guess by looking at this axis here what this number is. I'll just hover over it and it tells me, yeah, yeah. wind and solar, we do have a problem. Yeah, I love this too. I mean, we, we need to do a podcast around storyboards and dropping these into storyboards as well. But customers are kind of catching the vision to say, hey, I don't have to argue about the number. I'm going to just mouse over it and say exactly what it is. And if you wanted to, you could turn that into a drill down as well. And sure. You could add that right into your infographic. Sure, Absolutely. So then I came down here and I said, let's talk about those utility rates. And, you know, I wanted to use a different chart that people aren't <laughs> using, you know, every day here. Gotcha. So just a quick way to represent that. And, you know, if I was going to print this and send it out to somebody, I couldn't have a list of 50 different, uh, yeah. you know, states in the United States here. So I chose a radar. radar. I mean, you know, radar is not something that's widely used. But <laughs> what I like about this is I can easily see my outliers here. We got Hawaii yeah. and Alaska is my outliers. And just an interesting way to look at your data. And I really like throwing these uh, different sort of non-traditional graphs. Yeah. In. Yeah. The radar graph's great. In fact, I, I, I keep going to my favorite movie of Hunt for Red October. Give me one ping only, please. One <laughs> ping. You know, but I love this graph. That's perfect. Uh, great use of it. Yep. And then here at the bottom, what we did was we showed our top five and our worst five states here. Yeah. And we really just wanted to get that information out because let's say you're living in Detroit and your electricity bill is just crazy. Or Actually, better example, you're Vermont. living in Vermont. Yeah. Yeah. Vermont. yeah. And your electricity bill is crazy and you're barely making it. It's like, well, maybe I should be looking at moving to a different state that has a lower electricity rate to help me with my monthly bills. Yeah. Love this. So my only suggestion here is let's cite our sources. So when you go in to actually publish this, um, and, and that's kind of one of the things we want to do with our podcast is make this information available to you. And I'm going to see if I can get Tom to uh, also do a how-to video, how he put together some of these things behind the scenes. And then we want to publish that to you as a podcast listener. So maybe you can pick up some tips along the way. But yeah, let's, let's add our sources to this. Um, great job as usual. So again, everything you wanted to know about power, that's going to be up on the website here shortly. If you have any questions, feel free to ping us directly. It's tyler.mcgraw at yellowfin.bi and, and tom.linton at yellowfin.bi. All right. Well, that does it for this month's podcast on energy and power. I feel more uh, in knowledge. I, I have a little bit of knowledge and you've given me some insight about some data. So good job, Tom. And I appreciate your time today. Well, I'd like to take all the credit, but you know what? Yellowfin made it easy. <laughs> yeah, let's pass that on to your boss as well. You know, <laughs> team player Tom did this. All right, I'll catch you later. See ya.